might get interrupted by the sounds of hammering and power tools because it seems like here the first day of the month is you know usually signaled in by hammering on stuff relentlessly um, this video is a continuation of the last video which was making the interpretation of the Birka hat um, so once you have this part done uh, the two two halves of each cut out and sewn together we can continue with this video if you need the previous video it's down below uh, so let's get started so what you want to gonna want to do is take your liner piece and flip it good side out this is so that when you put it together in the inside of this one uh, it's good sides together. You don't really have to worry about the tip too much because it's going to be flipped back the other way anyway in the final hat. Uh, so then it's pretty simple. You just slide the two into each other and match up seams. Uh, I like to at least pin uh, one half if not or one side if not both. Uh, just because it makes it a little easier later. And I like to also pin down the, uh, the seam allowance just so that when you sew over it, it doesn't cause any problems. Uh, and then you kind of just, I think I'm going to just eyeball or, or freehand this part. Um, but I'm going to pin the other seam allowance, the other seam, um, just so that uh, you know you can um, not have to worry that your seams aren't going to line up, because sometimes the wool and the lining fabric don't play nice together, because the wool tends to have a little more stretch than the lining fabric, whether it's silk or whether it's nylon or rayon or whatever, uh, whichever fabric you're using, uh, in this case silk, um, you just don't want it to, to slip too much. So I have my machine all threaded up already, so I guess I will start sewing it. Uh, so what you basically want to do with this is sew it around the circumference, leaving you know about a hand width uh, on the one side so that you can um, actually flip it later. And so, easy way to do that is to just put in a pin there so as you're going around, you know to stop when you hit that pin. So, I will start by stitching at this seam and then going around that way. Again, uh, this might get a little bit noisy because of the industrial machine, um, and might get interrupted by hammering. So, hopefully, neither of those things are too too annoying. <laughs> So again, it's remembering just when you start the stitch, you back tack, and my thread broke. So it seems everybody in this city decided to make a lot of noise today. There's lots of sirens, lots of everything. So it's not the greatest day to be making a video, at least audio-wise. Um, and uh, this video is also made pre-coffee, so I might end up sounding a little grumpier than I am. That's just the caffeine withdrawal talk. So, after re-threading my machine because the, the thread broke, it's time to start sewing again. Because I already have stitches here, if I'm sewing along that same line, it's going to lock in anyway, so I don't really need to back tack. So you want to go fairly slow to make sure that everything lines up properly and that you're not stitching through extra pieces. Because this hat is uh, only two panels, everything lays in fairly nice and 
easily. Um, and remembering to pull the pins before you get to them because nobody likes a broken or bent needle. Um, some industrial machines you don't have to worry about it too much. But it still saves a little bit on your needles. And my third broke again. And the sounds this morning were crazy. It almost sounded like they were up there using every power tool they had. And at one point it almost sounded like they were hauling their stuff around that apartment with donkeys. Just, it was, it was awful. <laughs> I think it's just because this building doesn't really have much in the way of sound insulation. So. And I removed the pin that was there, uh, partially because it wasn't allowing me to line up the, uh, the fabric quite right. Uh, but I still see the hole where the pin went through the silk. So I can kind of use that as a mark. So there's that seam done. So now it's good to go around and make sure that you've removed all of the pins because uh, once you flip this you won't be able to get pins back out um, and nobody wants to have a pin inside their hat poking them in the head all the time. And then you just go around and trim off as many of these uh, threads as possible. Hopefully you only have four threads to cut instead of, you know, close to twelve. Um, because my thread was breaking so much. So now you just reach your hand in, you grab the uh, the tip of the liner piece, and you pull it through the hole. Then you reach up again, and you pull, you put your finger up inside the tip of this, just to give a bit of support, and then you sort of just roll it in. And kind of before you are, have it into a into the full hat, you sort of just stick your finger in and push. Uh, one thing I would really, really recommend is before you do any of this, you actually trim the the end of the thing, kind of similar to a profile like that. If you have uh, extra, um, if you have any extra fabric in your seam, there you should always trim it so that you can. When you flip it, it doesn't have as much that bunches up there, and you'll get a far, far cleaner tip that way. And then now, you just slide your hand back out and pull this all through. And then you're basically just going around and rolling it all out so that you have basically the pieces, two, the two halves like that with the, uh, the finished sides out. Um, and then, to turn it into the hat, obviously all you do is shove the liner back in and try to get it to sit as neatly as possible, getting it all the way up inside the tip there. Um, and then when you get down to here, you sort of just roll your seam along. So then you have this hole, uh, which you're going to have to hand sew shut. But you basically fold in both parts of fabric, parts of the fabric uh, along the seam allowance, which should be pretty easy. You more or less just sort of shove it in the hole and pull, and it with a thinner fabric stays crisp. With the wool, it's a little bit trickier. You know, sort of just make sure everything stays. And then uh, if you're doing this for, you know, because you want something that looks kind of like a gnome hat, um, and you don't really care about authenticity, you can go ahead and roll your seam under, uh, pin it, and then stitch around less than your seam allowance uh, with the machine. Uh, if you're doing it for reenactment, uh, I would actually really, really recommend that you 
fold it in and hand sew. Uh, you could even do a bit of a whip stitch um, before you do the next step. Um, so I am going to do that uh, and then I will get back. So now it's time for the fur. Uh, once you have this, this strip cut out, um, this one is uh, three quarters of an inch longer than the strip that I'm going to cut and from the fur and it's half an inch wider and that's so that I can fold it under by a quarter on each side and it matches up with the with the fur. Uh, so the choice of fur, in this case I'm using uh, muskrat. Um, one way that you can easily get um, ethically sourced fur because sadly in reenactment uh, you kind of have to use real fur you can't use fake fur uh, it, the fake fur just isn't good enough um, even though they've gone quite a quite a ways where I've actually felt the fur and thought that it was rabbit but it really wasn't um, it was actually a synthetic and I was really nice but it still it still just wouldn't exactly cut it for reenactment so if you are uh, really, really, really up on um, animal rights and you, you just don't want to use fur, uh, you don't have to, just don't put fur trim on your, on your clothing. And in a case like this, you could actually just put a, you know, like a hat band kind of thing. That would suffice as well. But uh, in this case, the person that the hat is for really wanted fur, so fur gets done. Um, so there's two ways that you can source ec ethically sourced fur. Uh, one of them is making sure that the animal that the fur came from was being used uh, as, a, as a source of food. Um, and whether that is getting cow hides, rabbit hides, um, goat, um, sheep, things like that, that sort of limits your species. Um, but you can get deer hides with the fur on and everything from hunters and get them tanned. Uh, and so at least you know then that the animal was killed for the purpose of eating it as well as using some of its other parts. Um, you can also get the hooves and things like that and use them for different crafts and stuff. Um, and I think that's a very good way to do it. If you want animals that are just fur bears, um, like mink, um, muskrat, beaver, uh, wild, uh, arctic fox, coyote, wolf, things like that. One of the easiest ways to get that is by buying old fur coats that are out of style that nobody wants anymore, and then just cutting them up and giving them new life. So that way you're taking something that was, you know, maybe killed in the 50s and 60s and reusing it for something that will actually be cared about now. And turn it into many different things instead of just one fur coat. Uh, so that's that's one way you can do it. Uh, other ways are uh, there are people out there who collect roadkill um, or animals that were killed by groups like the Ministry of Natural Resources or Fish and Game because they're nuisance animals. Um, and then you can get the, the hides tanned. Um, they sometimes come up at auction where you have this or you have an animal that was uh, was poached and then they the fishing game took all of the bear like the bear pelts and stuff like that from poachers and stuff and uh, are selling them at auction so um, I believe that happens a lot in Alaska not so much here in Ontario but you know uh, so what we do with the with the fur. Uh, it might be easier for some people to draw a pattern up first so that you aren't having to contend with large amounts of uh, fur and stuff on a table and having to shift things around a little to get the width and stuff you need. Um, but I am just going to draw this directly on the fur. And so you want to keep it 
fairly perpendicular to the grain of the hair. Uh, so for this you need a very sharp knife. Uh, most people use exacto knives. I don't particularly like to use that. So, and if you saw the other working video, I like to use my, uh, my puko. So you basically just want to poke it through the hide. And then sort of just cut along your line. Uh, and you don't want to press down on it and cut because then you don't want to cut the hairs. All you're attempting to do is just cut the membrane. Just cut the skin. Because you want those hairs to still be nice and long. It looks like this knife could do with some sharpening. So I guess I will end up using the uh, Exacto. So with a sharp knife, a very sharp knife, it just <laughs> glides right through. And make sure that you keep your hand underneath. It's underneath way well aware. Well away from the, uh, the blade because if the knife is able to cut the hide like this, this easily, um, it will slice through your finger that easily. And you won't feel it. And then you'll have a cut finger and blood all over your project. And sometimes, I don't know what's worse. So what you want to do is hem the ends, at least, or at least one end, on this, uh, this strip. Uh, you're going to have to do this by hand because you're going to be attaching it to the fur. Um, there's, and there's really no point in setting up the, the sewing machine just to do one little, one little strip. Um, it's just not particularly worth it. And so, two tips for for hand sewing. Uh, one I learned very recently. Um, my mom let me in on this this uh, hand quilting tip, uh, and that's tie the knot in the end that comes off the spool, and it should be le it's less likely to uh, to tangle. So the way I tie knots on the ends is I wrap it around my finger a couple times and then I roll it off my finger. So it kind of does, I don't know if it's focusing on that, that where it's all just a jumbled up thing of, of uh, thread. And then you just play, put it between your fingers and pull. And then it creates this big bulgy knot that isn't going anywhere. Now, the next tip is uh, for threading the needle. Uh, and most people think, okay, you lick the thread so that it'll slide through the needle, but that's actually not the best way. The best way is to actually lick the needle itself. You get a little bit of saliva inside the eye of the needle, and then slide the thread through, and the thread is sort of attracted to the moisture. And nine times out of ten, you'll get it on the first couple tries. So, that's a pretty good... Uh, Pretty good tip. So I'm just going to do about a quarter of an inch uh, seam on here, and I like to put the knot on the inside of any seams like this, so that way they're not hanging out and doing whatever, doing their thing. They're just sort of there inside. Um, and so this one do doesn't really matter how uh, doesn't really matter how pretty this stitch is, seam is. Um, the stitch length can be very long if you want. Uh, mostly because 
it's not really going to be seen. It's sort of just a basting stitch, just to make your life a little bit easier. And I suppose you could be using pins to do this a little bit, but you could pin it instead of that, but I don't particularly like to do that as much. So the next thing you want to do is stitch it to this. Uh, and the way that you're going to do that is, again, by folding in the edge and just doing it along the top edge and just making sure that you have enough left to fold under on the bottom as well. And a good thing to maybe do is just fold the edge in on both sides and stitch the end. So you want to make sure that your folds are somewhat even. And it helps to fold the fur down out of the way uh, so that you're not uh, really messing with it too much. And then you want to go through the fur. And then you're just going to do a whip stitch along the edge. So a whip stitch is uh, going through from one side out the other and then just returning back to the same side that you're going through each time instead of doing like a running stitch where you're going in and out and in and out this is just in around in around uh, and it basically is there to sort of tie the end of something or the edges of something together and this again doesn't really have to be very pretty nobody's really ever going to see it um, you just want to be fairly fairly neat So, you basically get the hang of that where it's uh, it's stuck to the edge. And then you're going to want to go all the way around uh, just, folding, just folding the edges in. It's only exactly the same way until you get it attached. Well, I really hate to do this, but uh, I have to stop this one here. Uh, just stop me from having an extremely long video again. Um, it's still going to be over 20 minutes. Um, but as soon as it gets up to about half an hour, it's almost impossible to upload with my current internet situation. So um, I am going to stop it here as much as I hate to. I was hoping to be able to actually get the, uh, the trim sewn on the hat today so that all the last video would be what would be uh, making the shape and sewing it on. Uh, but it's going to be making the shape, sewing it on, and sewing on the the rim so basically just finishing the hat uh, so I hope you enjoy the video um, I hope it helps anybody out that's planning on making hats like these they're they end up sort of uh, gnome like uh, so the final hat will sort of you know hang a little bit like that with the fur trim around the ears and stuff uh, this one actually ended up a little tight on my head so uh, adding just a little bit will will make it a little better. Um, it will sort of stretch out a little bit. This one, this one probably won't. Uh, if you're using new fabrics, it will, uh, because everything kind of stretches out a little bit as it ages and whatever. Um, this one uh, probably won't because it's both old curtains and an old jacket, so everything sort of stretched out to what it is. But good news is the person that I'm making it for, his head is just a little bit smaller than mine, so it should work out properly. Um, but it's nice with the just the gnominess. Uh, so thank you for watching um, and if you like the videos uh, please don't hesitate to like and subscribe. If you uh, have any questions or comments as always just leave them below and uh, please if you're on Facebook 
uh, like my like page, that way you won't miss anything. All the video links to all the videos get posted there, as well as um, sometimes I post little texts, text posts and stuff, and pictures. So that would be Thor, uh, Thorbjorn Yorkelson on Facebook. Uh, I'll post the link down below. Uh, so thank you for watching.